Konnichiwa! Today, we're going to talk about the best method of learning Japanese. And don't worry, I'm not just going to say that my method is the best method, because whether it is or not depends on you. And I think we have a way of cutting straight through this question to find out what is the best method of learning Japanese for you, not for me, not for the people who write Genki, not for Katsumoto-san or anyone else but for you. Now, a lot of people worry about this question of the best method of learning Japanese, and many people spend a lot of time in meta-Japanese English language sites and forums and places like Shedit or Shredit or whatever it's called. And there is a bad reason for this, but there's also a very good reason. The bad reason, of course, is that it's just easier than learning Japanese. And the good reason is that there are various different methods of learning Japanese all claiming to be the best one, and all of them based to a very large extent on what I would call magical thinking, and on something that's very closely aligned to magical thinking in this particular case, and that is the work ethic. They're all based on this idea that you put in hours and hours with a particular method and sometime in the distant future, you're going to become fluent, whatever that means. And as an intelligent person, you know that that future happy event isn't by any means guaranteed. So, just as with a person who is investing a lot of money, you're investing a lot of time, and naturally you want to know that your time is going to be well invested. You don't want to invest in a dud, and you want to make the best use of your time, so you want to know what's the best method. Now, as I've said, I think the underlying reason for this is the magical thinking behind this whole learning Japanese ideology, that you just slog away for a long time for a result in the far distant future, and the fact that there's no guarantee of any result anywhere. I believe that we can take the magical element right out of this. I believe that we can test and verify and see that things are working right now in the present, not in some remote and distant future. Now, let's take my own approach for a moment. As you may know, my approach begins with structure. Once you've got a little bit of basic vocabulary, which you can get anywhere you like, we start to look at the structure of the language how it holds together. Now, if you want to assess my method, watch the first five to ten lessons of my structure course, which will take you an hour or so, and see what happens. I set a very high bar for verification. Unless you say, Ah, so you got a dash da, in the famous words of Catriel Leighton. So that's how it is. That's how it all fits together. That's the structure. Why didn't anyone tell me that? If that's the kind of eureka feeling you get watching my structure lessons, then this part of it at least is the method where you carry on with my structure. If not, if you think, oh, this is pretty similar to Genki or something, then throw me away. Get another Android. So then, what about the next bit? What about my so-called anime method? Well, the thing here is, once again, there's no mystery, there's no magic, there's no act of faith. There is this thing called the input hypothesis, and some people use it as a kind of magical formula, using the magic word science to justify it. Fortunately, it isn't science, which is a lucky thing, because in education, Scientific theories change at least once a decade. What it is, is common sense, which is much more solid. Very broadly, what it states is that if you have sufficient, comprehensible input, and you keep moving forward with that input into more complex areas, you will learn the language, and you will. It doesn't matter if you're using my method, or some other method, 
or just doing it by accident, as people have over the centuries, it'll work. So the only questions you really need to ask yourself are whether you like these methods. The reasons I use anime I've outlined in my videos on the question. I advocate it because it gives you audio as well as visual input on what you're learning. It allows you to repeat in the background of your life material that you've already made comprehensible by going through the subtitles. It teaches you new vocabulary. It teaches you kanji as you go along. And of course you have to use Anki to study this, but it's a very minimal use of Anki. Most of your time is not spent playing with Anki. Most of your time is spent in real immersion, direct immersion into Japanese material. But you may not like it. For example, it involves going very slowly through anime at first. It's tough. Every method of learning Japanese is tough unless it's very slow, in which case it's boring. Now, some people may say, I don't like going through anime at this kind of a slow pace. I have to look things up every few subtitles. I can't enjoy it that way. I'd rather do Anki sentences. If that's how you feel, then you need to use a method that uses Anki sentences instead. Because what works best for you is going to be what you like doing, what you can most fully immerse yourself in. However, if you can immerse yourself in this way, something else happens that's very important, and that completely demolishes this whole question of the best way of learning Japanese, at least in the way that it's usually understood. Because what I advocate is getting rid of this work ethic study model as early as possible. Instead of studying Japanese, practicing Japanese, sentence mining, or any of these other study-oriented activities, what we're doing is living Japanese, using Anki as minimally as possible to give us the support we need in doing that. We are building a Japanese life. It doesn't have to be all Japanese all the time, but whatever section of our life we section off to become our Japanese life, in that section Japanese is the language. Whatever we do in there, whether we are reading books, whether we are watching anime, whether we are watching movies, whether we are playing games, whether we are having conversations with our friends, whether they be Japanese or whether they be other foreign acquirers of Japanese. Whatever we are doing, we are doing it in Japanese and we are enjoying it. And if we can do that, let's be honest, if we could find a more efficient method of learning Japanese that was boring, would we do it? just to cut off maybe a few months from the time when we become fluent, whatever that means. If you don't enjoy the journey, you almost certainly won't enjoy the goal all that much. And there is no goalpost. There's really no time when you become so-called fluent. What you're doing is growing up in Japanese, living your Japanese life from day to day, enjoying it from day to day, and growing from day to day. And that is the best method of learning Japanese. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below, and I will answer as usual. I'd like to thank my Gold Kokeshi patrons, and all my patrons and supporters on Patreon and everywhere. And I'd like to thank you for attending this lesson. これからもよろしくお願いします。Cast dismissed.